If you're into 3D printing, chances are you're enough of a nerd to also have a smart home. At least I am. And I have a bunch of things set up with my smart home that makes it easier, cheaper, and safer to use my 3D printers. This video was made possible thanks to today's sponsor, Skillshare. More on that later. The heart of my smart home is Home Assistant. This is my central smart home bridge and general brains. You can probably do many of the things that I talk about with different systems, but I think Home Assistant is just the most flexible and allows for the most customization in terms of things that you can build. And that's why I prefer it. Personally, I use a Home Assistant Yellow as my hardware because that has a lot of the radios already built in. And that's the nice thing. With Home Assistant, you can pull all the different things and all the different standards into one device. Whereas with something like HomeKit, you only can buy stuff that is HomeKit compatible and you always gotta kind of worry, does this work and blah, blah. So Home Assistant is really open. First of all, it has, you know, the Zigbee radio built in and you can use pretty much all Zigbee devices from all different manufacturers. This way you can always get the best for what you need or the cheapest or the combination. You're not locked into one system, which is really great. Beyond that, there's a lot of integrations for other manufacturers that don't use Zigbee or other standards, but you can just use it through their web API and still control all of those devices. You just have everything in one app and the nice thing is, that you can also make everything automate together, which really gives the power of the smart home. I gotta be honest though, there's also some downsides to Home Assistant. In my personal view, it's a little bit more cumbersome, you know? This is something really for power users and you can sink a lot of time into getting everything to work specifically. The other thing is, since you're using so many different brands and APIs and stuff, there's a lot more room for things to go wrong. For example, I had it where one of my lights, because that was from one specific brand, didn't work for a week and I had to, you know, kind of like throw it out of Home Assistant and reconfigure for things to work again. So something like this can happen more easily with this kind of system, but it also gives you so many more options and possibilities. So I think for me, that's a trade-off that I'm willing to make. So now that we talked about the basic system, let's get into specifics. I think the first and most important thing you can really get are smart power plugs. These things give you so many possibilities. The first thing for me is that it allows me to remotely turn on and off my 3D printers. This means my printers aren't running when I'm not using this. So I'm definitely saving a lot of power by them not running and constantly drawing power and also I don't have the noise which can be annoying because some of them run their fans the whole time. On the other hand it's really nice because I can turn them on from wherever I am and then start a remote print job through either my computer or even through the app which makes it really nice to just get prints going whenever I feel like it. So this is already a huge improvement but there's more cool stuff that you can do with smart plugs like these. The second thing that I can really recommend is buying ones that also measure power draw and power consumption. I use this on one hand to kind of keep track on how much electricity do I use or waste on all of these 3D prints that I'm doing. But to me, things get really interesting once it comes to automations. With automations, you can do so much cool stuff and you know, it just allows you to make your life better without having to do anything or without thinking about it. And that's what Smart Home is really all about for me. My most important automation is turning my printers off after they have finished a print. I do this by monitoring the power draw of my 3D printer. You can usually see that when the printer's printing and the heat beds and everything's working, you'll have a fairly high power draw of like two to 300 watts, something like that. When the printer's idling, it usually goes to something like 10 or 15 watts. And between that, you can definitely easily see where's the threshold of the printer working or not working. I then have an automation that checks this number all the time. And if the number is below a certain threshold, I usually put this at like 30 watts, but this might be different for each of your printers. If it is below 30 watts for 30 minutes, then just turn the printer off. This way, you know, you have that little delay and checking so it's not, you know, based on any spike or something like that. But it will really show if the printer is done printing and turned everything off except a little bit of this and that, then the printer will be turned off. I like this because as I said, it saves a lot of power, 10 or 15 watt is a lot and especially if you have many printers going that can really add up. Secondly, since it's automated, I don't have to think about it. And even if a print ends at night, the printer will be turned off automatically. And I love that. The second automation I have is safety related. And I think that's really important as well. I often have my 3D printers running while I'm not here. And I definitely know that there are safety concerns with that and always something could go wrong. And I know the safest way is obviously just being here but that's not very feasible for me. So I have tried to mitigate this 
and by setting up an automation. I have a smart smoke detector. So besides, you know, just giving off an alarm, if there's smoke detected, it will also give that to my smart home. My smart home will check that there's smoke being detected and automatically turn off the smart plugs of all of my 3D printer. So that way there's no more power going to the 3D printers and you know, the source of the electrical fire might already just be cut off. And in an ideal world, that'll just stop everything. And other than that, you know, it might lead to less of a problem or a smaller fire. The second thing that I, that I also have is if the, this is detected, since this is my office and not my place where I sleep, I have a send notifications to my phone and you can send them critical. So they will always go through and they will always go on full volume that there's smoke detected here in the office. So even at night or whenever, I will get the notification and can quickly come by and try to save things. For now, these are my automations. You can definitely go way more in detail and do other stuff with this, but this is perfect for me and usually works for what I do. So there's a lot more stuff you can automate and I'd really love to hear from you in the comments. Is there any other automations that you do and that you really think I'm missing out? And generally, I just love it when things work automatically. Talking about automation, this is always something that I try to incorporate, not only in my smart home, but also in all other areas of life. And a great way to do this is of course AI, but but I often see myself not using AI to its full potential. You know, you have your like one, two things that you always do with AI, but then there's so much more that you could be using and, you know, making yourself faster. And that's why I really love the class ChatGPT for creatives from today's sponsor, Skillshare. Through that, I learned there's so much more where I can be using AI in my day-to-day -day YouTube stuff. So not only using it for ideation, making better titles, but also integrating it for using better thumbnails and giving me ideas for that. And all that without losing my specific style, because often I just use it as a start off point to not start with a blank page. But with all of that, it just makes me so much faster in my workflow. The cool thing about Skillshare in general is that it's the largest learning community for creatives in general. So that means with one membership, you get access to thousands of classes on all different kinds of topics. So no matter if I want to become better at my job, taking classes on YouTube or camera techniques, just improve the look of my office with interior design classes, or just do something fun like, you know, learning how to draw in the evening, just because that's a great thing to do. The nice thing is there's always something to find on Skillshare, which I really appreciate. So if you love learning as much as me, give Skillshare a try. The first 500 people to use my link down below will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today. Coming back to my 3D printing smart home, the next really important category is air quality monitoring. Especially when your 3D printer is in the same room as you are, then you should definitely check out the air quality since there's a lot of particles being thrown into the air and you don't want to breathe all of that in. So you should really check the air quality and try your best to keep it well ventilated. There's a couple of things you can do here. First of all, I made an automation that reminds me to open the window every two hours or so when I'm in the office. So this tracks my location and when I'm in the office, it will give me that reminder every now and then. So, you know, I don't forget and I just sit in the same sale area the whole day. This is really easy and not super advanced, but I still really like it. And you know, when it comes to air quality, just getting some new fresh air in is still one of the best ways. The other thing that I really like is tracking your air quality. Thomas and Landra from Made With Layers made this really cool air quality monitor, which I'm gonna build in one of my next videos and then really keep track of how 3D printing, you know, affects the air quality. As I said before, this is one of my future videos where in general, I wanna take a closer look at air quality and what to do. So if you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button down below. And the last step that you could do here that I'm actually not currently doing is having an air purifier paired with the air quality monitor. So with this, you could just check Hey, if this goes over a certain threshold, then you turn on your air purifier to make sure that your air is, you know, getting cleaned. This is something that I think is really cool, especially if you combine it with opening the window and getting new air in. I think this is a really important way to keep your air well, especially when you're working in the room full time as I am. One last thing that definitely only works with Home Assistant is the Bamboo Lab integration into Home Assistant. This way you can really pull a lot of the data into your Home Assistant dashboards and you know, just kind of monitor all your 3D printers. 
I think this is a really cool feature if you have a lot of printers because this can be, you know, the one dashboard where you can see all of them side by side and keep track of everything's going well. With the new Bamboo Lab changes in terms of their firmware, you can now still read all of the data as before, so you know you can really use this as a monitoring dashboard, but you can't really control the printer from it anymore. So that's a slight downside, which is annoying, but as a dashboard in general, I think it's still a really cool thing. Personally, to me, it's kind of a gimmick because I only have three, four printers around here and I can basically see all of them, so I don't need to monitor all of them. But maybe if you have a print farm or you know, you're constantly far away, then this might be a really interesting way of monitoring your printers from far away and having all those stats in one super nice and tidy dashboard. Although I used and showed Bamboo Lab as an example for this, there's also plugins for Home Assistant for tons of other 3D printer brands. So for example, for Prusa or for Creality, you can have the dashboard for all of your printers from tons of different manufacturers, which can be really nice and helpful. So that's it from me for this video. I hope you got tons of new ideas how to use your smart home together with your 3D printers and just make the whole thing a little bit smoother, easier, and hopefully even safer. If you're interested in any of the stuff I talked about, I'll have links to that in the description down below. And also if you wanna buy a new 3D printer or filament, I'll have links for that in the description. It really helps me if you use those links and you know, help me make some money with these YouTube videos. Other than that, as I said before, leave me a comment down below with what other 3D printing, smart home automations and stuff I could still be doing. I love to learn from you guys. And if you're not done watching YouTube videos yet, you should check out this video where I talk about the seven 3D printing tips I wish I knew earlier. This is just stuff that maybe is a little basic, but all of this really, you know, helped me a lot 3D printing, making stuff faster and easier, so I really enjoyed that. Maybe there's a tip in there that will also help you and, you know, make this one thing so much easier and faster. But until then, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye.